Lydia Yuknovich is the epitome of a literary activist. She's author of three astounding collections of innovative fiction. Her other mouths, Liberty's Excess and Real to Real, and a book of criticism, Allegories of Violence. She is co-founder of Chiasmus Productions and co-organizer of The Writer's Edge. Lydia's writing has appeared in Postmodern Culture, Fiction International, Another Chicago Magazine, and everywhere else. Um, plus, she is adored by her students in Oregon, Washington, and beyond, not to mention me. She's worked so tirelessly on this conference that I don't know how to begin to thank her, except to publicly embarrass her like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, two things. Um, yes. <laughs> Thing number one, it came up in the workshop I was pretending to lead, um, that you can't make a lot of money for writing books like ours, and that is true. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been sitting there listening, and I think a better question is, what do you as an individual want to do with your money? And i got to be honest with you, I own all these books. I own more than one copy of all these books, and I'm going to buy them again. <laughs> So astonishingly cool. Can you give them a hand? Yeah. Organic farts. Yeah, Link up with organic farts. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, I'd rather own eight copies of all of those books than buy the books that are making the money. I think you see my point. Thing number two. Thing number two is it's really cool to know a lot of you over time because I've been writing a long project and I've seen you over time and I, I just want to thank, oh, whoa, emotion. I want to thank you for helping me with something I'm really close to finishing because a lot of you have been there for it, and you'll recognize it. And um, it's really meaningful to me that you've been there over time with me. So thank you. A city, a house. As we articulate these things from America, don't we mean, in the end, I own this? Don't we mean property? I am my father's daughter. I am my husband's wife. This is my son. This is my daughter. I am making my house a home. This life, mine, I bought it. But this place she is from is not America. And so the story derails like a train disappearing through the ice. For who will hear the story of a girl lost to history, unimportant to America? So to picture her family, to picture her parents, you'd have to imagine something like a glimpse of something about to crack through the ice and disappear. Her father was a poet, her mother a weaver. Her father could engineer and build anything with only his hands. Her mother could sing and make medicines and calm a child in the night. Everything they were happened through their hands. Her father taught her poems on how to build a tiny city from mud and straw and twigs. Her mother taught her songs on how to make a pattern with cloth and color. To say that her father taught her to write and draw is to say something secretly profound, for until the 1900s, the girls with blood like hers turned into women who were illiterate, beaten for using or learning books. Her father did not beat her. Her mother was not illiterate. They read stories to each other. They sang. They built little houses for birds. Her mother decorating the walls with her daughter's little drawings and her own spun wool or tapestries. Her father filling the nights with word song. But you see, this 
prehistory of her and her lineage as not history worthy or history making until her photo is captured by an American photographer who is famous to the world this girl is nothing a sub story if you will or just storyless why there wasn't even enough paper in the house and if there had been paper in the house they'd have burned it for heat or for closing the wind in a shivering wall. But they did tell each other stories, deep inside an intimate domestic. Stories of poverty, impossible love, the ever-evolving loss of freedom, displacement, rootlessness, and the ill gescalis, the long road. Stories of animals and ice, of fire and demons and daughters. Her father, the poet, is a poet really a poet if he speaks only to his daughter inside a house lit by fire against the white of the snow and ice? A house, a family on its way to vanishing? Can we say that from an American point of view, that her father was a poet, having won no prizes, having no books to hoist underneath his arm, no teaching position or list of paid readings or marketable statistics to his credit? her father the poet. Once, when she was four, she was on her father's shoulders in the darkened woods next to a frozen lake. They skirt the woods without completely entering. Forest animals scrutinize their movements. She is laughing, at least in the memorized image of herself, she is laughing. She is holding tight to her father's ears. He is saying, not so tight, my tiny, not so tight. You will pull your father's ears from his head. Her laughter and his melodize the periphery of the forest. They make warmth against the ice and snow, almost like a new color. Is it love to want to die there, inside an image like that, with a father? Her father, the poet. He creates an oral history of that moment and tells and tells it around great fires after dinners, after work, after the tiny family, a wife, a son, a daughter, has settled and touched one another and drank and moved between horses and smells. For something else happens there beside her love for him, her knees pressed against his cheeks. It is a story about animals. It is a story he created for her. A caribou was walking against the forest next to a frozen lake with its family. The youngest fell lame and the mother, who was already weakened from childbirth, insisted on carrying her. The mother became weaker and weaker and at some point was so delirious with fatigue that she let slip the tiny life into the great flattened white of things. A girl and her father came upon the tiny thing just as it was dying. The girl held its head and the father sang a very old song with his eyes closed, and the beast died. Her father narrates the ending in song and lyric to his family. And in her head, she continues a warm story beyond the ending of the father and the daughter who came upon the dying animal. The girl wonders if the last thing she saw was the image of her animal father and her animal mother disappearing into blur and ice, or if, by chance, she saw she, she and her father, before she passed, if it was the strong back of her father and the tender rhythm of her mother's legs she saw, the animal thing, maybe her leaving took a home with it forever. And if it was the father and daughter who found her at the cusp she saw last, Perhaps the difference in their species melted as snow in a great thaw. The word she and the word she becoming each other, daughter and caribou. Perhaps the beating of hearts simply became the earth's cadence. Perhaps bodies returned to their animal past, hand and hoof releasing to the energy of matter. She loves the story. This story her father told and told before her family was blown to bits fatherless, beautiful story. It becomes a story she loves to death. It is also the story of children, 
she will think later in life. consuming really fast and potently <laughs> because we kind of need to make our way toward the open mic sooner than later but before you leave we seriously hope you visit the book station I don't care if you already have them be like me buy several that you already have and thank you for listening you beautiful people you